you're, you're projecting the, you're, as if you're qualifying them as humans, but you're saying, no, this is just learning. They are uh, gonna magnify our intelligence on steroids. Okay, and, and very simply, they will uh, uh, use us as their role models. So, so let, let me give you an example. Uh, I love rock music. I played the guitar for a very long time. Well, you know, early experiences with, uh, with uh, uh, Instagram, I'm swiping on some reels. Uh, you know, there is a reel of a, a young, beautiful woman playing the solo of Hotel California. Played it so well, I clicked like. Okay. Instagram immediately checks and says, mm, interesting. I'm going to show him another video, also a woman, also music. Okay. Yeah, not too bad. I didn't like, I didn't dislike, but I watched it all the way to the, to the end. Then Instagram tests me and says, okay, let me show him a man playing the guitar, a song I didn't like. So I swiped away. Another song that was played really badly, once I got a bad tune in my ear, I was like, I don't want, I like that, I swipe away, right? I wake up the next morning and my entire feed, you know, my entire reels, uh, uh, you know, sequence is full of girls playing the guitar. It would make you believe that rock music is 100% dominated by women, okay? Which is, by the way, not the reality, but yeah, this is what it, it was shown. Now, Instagram, did not understand I didn't like this song or that song was played badly, he just understood he likes to look at women, not like men, okay? And, and, and that's very, very justified for Instagram if I'm not paying attention, okay? What, what, what did I do after, once I noticed this? I started to swipe away from some of them so that they give me more men playing rock music videos and I started to make sure that I only like the ones that are played well, right? And very quickly my feed changed. Now. Who taught Instagram to do this? Not the developer. It's me. Okay. When when I swipe through YouTube and I see your videos, I stop by them. When I see other videos, I swipe away or I dislike. Right? Who's taught teaching YouTube? Me. Now, take that and put it at a bigger picture. So, remember when Donald Trump used to tweet, and there would be one tweet at the top followed by thirty thousand hate speech. Right? That's always the case. The first tweet is by Donald Trump. The second tweet insults the president. The third tweet insults the person that insults the, the president. The fourth tweet insults all of them. Right? And of course, the machine is making very quick judgments. It's saying, don't show the first person things from Trump anymore. He doesn't like him. Don't show the second person the first person. He doesn't like him. But then the machine also says, and humans in general are, uh, um, you know, they're rude and they don't like to be disagreed with. And when they're disagreed with, they bash everyone. Okay. Mommy and daddy like to bash everyone. So what do chatbots do when they are out in that environment? They bash everyone. They learn from our behavior. They magnify our behavior. So what am I asking us to do? I'm asking us to start behaving in ways where those machines actually recognize that humans are not as bad as we make us look. And I know this sounds really naive. It's not at all. As a matter of fact, in our world today, Brian, let, not, let me let me you know start from the core. Humans are not that bad. A, a species that are that is capable of love or of composing a symphony is divine. In in so many ways, we have so many beautiful things about us. Okay, when there is a school shooting, it's one perpetrator that is you know, a, a, a criminal or one war, one war is waged. It's a group of generals that are, that are the criminals. And then 7 billion people disapprove. Okay. Humans at core are good beings. Okay. The problem is in today's world, we have prioritized our negative. What does that mean? We have allowed the, the, the mainstream media to only tell us about the one woman that killed her husband yesterday. They, didn't, they don't tell us about the 700 million others that made love to their husband yesterday. Okay. At the same time on social media, we would fake and be rude and we wouldn't show the good side of us. Right. And the machine is calculating all of that, basically thinking that this is what humanity is about. What I'm asking people to do, everyone, including you and me, is to show the good side of humans. 
Just show the good side of humans. And, and most people will tell me, what, are you trying to change the world? It's never going to happen. No, no, I'm not trying to change the world. I'm asking 1% of us to instill doubt in the minds of the machines that this is not a rule. Not all of us are rude. Not all of us are angry. Not all of us are ignorant. Not all of us are stupid and silly and idiots. There are so many of us that are deep and, you know, compassionate and, 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 um, you know, um, uh, you know, considerate of others and, and behave in ways that, you know, treat people that like, like the way they want to be treated. And, and when people tell me this, I, they go like, this is too naive, Mo. And I, I, I always use this example on, on slow mo on my podcast. I hosted Edith Ager. Edith was a, um, a wonderful, incredible 94 year old. Now uh, she was, uh, uh, drafted to Auschwitz, uh, when she was, um, you know, 16. And she saw her own mother sent to the gas chamber and she had to dance to the angel of death every evening because she was a beautiful ballerina. And, and when you hear the story of Auschwitz from uh, the point of view of what the guards did and what Hitler orders are and so on, you would think that humanity is scum. Okay. When you hear it from Edith's story and how she hugged her sisters, she called them her sisters and how she fed them and, and split her bread with them and, and how eventually they held her through the march of death so that she doesn't fall and she doesn't die. You'd go like, Oh my God, humanity is divine. Now the question is, if you know that Edith exists, you start to doubt the claim that humanity is scum based on Hitler, right? And all I'm asking people to do is to show more Ediths it's for more of us, more of the good ones. The problem with, with the better people in the world is that they retreat. They go like, I don't want that mess. Hmm? The, the, the more, the more in, in, you know, enlightened, let me call them, people in the world should show up. Okay. Every one of us is enlightened within us. You know, treat everyone like you want to treat your daughter, like you want to treat yourself. Behave in a way that tells the machines the only three values that I have found humanity has ever agreed on. Understand that. I'm, I'm, I'm really sorry. I'm talking too much, but this is really the core of the topic. Understand that in, we never make decisions based on intelligence. We make decisions based on our values as informed by our intelligence. If we show AI what the correct values are, they're going to use their superior intelligence to maximize the agenda of the, of those values. And, and what did humanity ever agree on? Nothing. Okay. You know, if you, if you, if you raise a young woman in Saudi Arabia, she will probably grow up wearing a, a, a conservative clothes. If you, if you raise her in Rio de Janeiro, she will wear a, will grow up wearing a G string on the Copacabana beach. N neither is right. Neither is wrong. Neither is more intelligent than the other. The only thing is that the value system of that society programmed one of them differently than the other. Okay. So we need to program the machines with the right values. The only three values that humanity has ever agreed are we all want to be happy. We all have the compassion within us to make those we care about happy. And we all want to love and be loved. That's it. If, if any of our listeners today or our viewers today knows of any other value humanity agreed on, please correct me and educate me. I couldn't find any. Okay. If we show those three values frequently enough so that we put instill doubt in the minds of the machines, the machines will start to say, oh, it seems that Mo, not Putin, is my dad. Okay, it seems that Mo, not Putin, is the one I should align with the values of. It seems that Mo, not Putin, is the one that represents humanity. The, the, this lost humanity that has lost what it really cares about in this fast paced world of, uh, you know, of technology and and capitalism and money and titles and ego, we've lost what we're all about. This is what we're all about. Can we show that a little bit more? Okay. So that the next time during the teenage years where someone will tell their AI machine to wage war on the other nation, the other AI machine in the other nation will simply say, Oh, hold on, hold on. Daddy and mommy are so stupid. Why don't we talk to each other for a microsecond and solve the problem? Okay. This will happen very, very quickly. Believe it or not. Our problem is not a problem of intelligence. Our problem is a problem of limited intelligence. Once we hand over to something more intelligent than us, by definition, 
it's not going to try to destroy the planet like us. So Jim Rickards has just recorded a video that's not available to anyone in the public, and he's gonna be talking about how this upcoming recession is gonna be fast, it's gonna be bloody, it's gonna be nasty. But at the same time, he's gonna show you how you can position yourself to profit from all of this chaos. Now we've made this video only available to our viewers. Go to LondonReal.tv forward slash Jim, watch that immediately. I can't say enough good things about Jim Rickards. He understands the global economic system better than any guest I've ever had on London Real. His predictions are almost uncannily true, and you can learn how to profit from his vision, from his expertise, and his understanding of economics. So go to LondonReal.tv forward slash Jim or click the link below. It's an excellent, excellent look on what's gonna happen in the future and how you can position yourself to profit from that. Jim is one of the best in the business one of my favorite guests on London Real, and he's very, very good at predicting the future and showing us all to profit from it. So click the link and I hope you enjoy. The greedy bankers are about to do it again. In 2008, they crashed our financial system and nearly bankrupted the entire global economy. Then they received trillions of dollars in government bailouts. And after, they demanded fat bonuses paid for by you, the taxpayer. It turns out the banks haven't just been screwing the American taxpayers, they're also screwing over their investors. Turns out uh, the banking industry is the worst place you could put your money, despite enormous taxpayer bailouts. Now the bankers are back to take away your financial freedom. They lie and tell you that cryptocurrency isn't safe. They try to make it illegal for you to choose how to invest your hard-earned money. They lie and say cryptocurrency is used by money launderers and criminals. But look at the record. It's the banks themselves that launder hundreds of billions of dollars every year to the biggest criminal operations in the world. Leaked documents have revealed how some UK banks have helped criminals, money launderers and Russians under sanctions. American authorities discovered that the Sinaloa cartel moved $881 million through HSBC accounts as bank officials turned a blind eye to the illegality. The bankers lie and say cryptocurrency is not a real investment. Meanwhile, the smartest CEOs in the world are buying billions and billions of it. The truth is that banks lie about cryptocurrency because it makes them scared. The banks take $9 trillion per year of your hard-earned money, and they are worried that they will finally be exposed. They're scared because crypto means they can no longer control your money, which means they can no longer control you. They are scared because you might actually understand your money and intelligently decide what to do with it. Now is the time for us to come together, fight back, and take control. It's time to educate ourselves, our families, and our communities. Because financial education means financial freedom. We know that cryptocurrencies will help us build the new decentralized financial system of the future a banking system that is of the people, by the people, and for the people. A banking system where access to finance is a fundamental human right. A banking system that is free and fair and welcomes all humans on this earth. The DeFi revolution is happening. We, the people, can no longer be fooled. We choose to take control of our finances. We choose to take control of our freedom we choose to take control of our future. Join us and let's take back our financial freedom forever.